Now there's a saying that anything valuable will be faked. And sadly, that's true for vintage Star Wars figures. Places like eBay are littered with reproduction Star Wars figures, or as I call them, counterfeit. Now for the most part, most people will be honest and tell you that these are reproductions. But when you're dealing with a figure like the Vinyl Cape Jawa that's worth thousands of dollars, not everyone's going to be honest. So I thought we would take a closer look at the Vinyl Cape Jawa for some things for you to look at in case you're in the market to buy a Vinyl Cape Jawa or you just get lucky and find one. First, let's take a look at the figure loose. The color of the cape should match the Jawa. A lot of people fake the Vinyl Cape Jawa by just cutting an Obi-Wan Kenobi cape. Now they are similar in color, but the Jawa cape should match the Jawa. The Obi-Wan cape is a reddish brown color. Putting an Obi-Wan cape on a Jawa is easy to tell. Now there was a Vinyl Cape Jawa release in Australia with a darker color cape. However, here we're just talking about the US release. Another big clue that someone just didn't cut an Obi-Wan Kenobi cape is the armholes. The cape should fit tight around the arms, like any of the other Star Wars figures that wear a cape. If someone's using a cut Obi-Wan Kenobi cape, it will be loose around the Jawa's arm due to the small Jawa arms. A real vinyl cape Jawa has smaller holes to fit tightly around the arm. As for the cape itself, it will be just as thick as an Obi-Wan Kenobi cape and feel the same. Many fakes, not made from just cutting an Obi-Wan Kenobi cape, are made out of a slightly different material. A lot of these capes are stiffer and thicker than a real vinyl cape. The outside of a real vinyl cape will be very smooth, but look on the inside and you'll see a very faint crosshatch pattern. If you're able to hold the figure, a good way to test for this is to slide your fingernail up and down the cape and you should feel the grain of the pattern. If you do, most likely it's real as this pattern is very hard to fake. Another key thing to look for is the length of the cape. If it goes past the Jawa's feet or even right to the bottom of the feet, it's fake. Or it could be even cut too high. A real vinyl cape will be about half an inch from his feet. Now let's look at the carded figure. First up, all vinyl cape Jawas were on a 12 back card. If the back of the card doesn't look like this, it's a fake. And again, we're talking about all Kenner US release cards. The most easiest thing to tell is to look at the bubble. The vinyl cape Jawa has a different bubble than the cloth cape Jawa. The bubble on the vinyl cape Jawa is thin and flat. The common cloth cape Jawa has two different types of bubbles. One is very similar to the vinyl cape bubble, but it sinks in. But the vinyl cape bubble is smooth. Again, this is the key thing to look for if you're looking at a carded vinyl cape Jawa, as this was the only time this bubble was used on a Jawa. Well, that's a look at some things you can look for if you find a vinyl cape Jawa. Now, sadly, the counterfeiters out there are getting much better at making reproductions or counterfeit vintage Star Wars toys, so it's not always easy to keep up with how to tell what is real and what is fake. One of the best things to do is get as many photos as you can, join one of the Star Wars vintage collector news groups, and get other people's opinion. But at least there you'll get more than just one opinion before you lay down a lot of cash for a vinyl cape Jawa. Hey, jump man <laughs> channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.